This meat isn't sold in other countries. Did you know that? An obesity crisis among specific islanders. This is the story of how a once healthy island nation became the most obese country in the world and a population with the highest prevalence of diabetes ever discovered. Nauru, located off the coast of Australia, has a population of about 11,000 people, and 94.5% of them are classified as critically overweight, with a whopping 71.7% .7 of the entire country classified as obese. And that number is growing. Nauru is experiencing the fastest BMI increase in the world, with rates four times higher than the rest of the world. But how exactly does an entire island nation become obese? And strangely, the surrounding islands, the islands around Nauru, they make up the most obese countries in the world. How can this be? What is going on out there? Well, as we'll see, what's been happening in Nauru is really an amplified version of what's been happening in the rest of the world. But before we get into it, a message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Fabulous. Do you find it hard to rewire your brain and adopt new habits? Fabulous makes it easy to build and improve your habits. Fabulous is a digital coach by your side that encourages you to create long lasting change through positive reinforcement. The app is extremely cute, but don't let that fool you. Its programs are completely backed by science. There are two approaches you can choose from. First, you can build routines yourself for more than 100 recommended habits. Customize your routines and use Fabulous behavioral science principles to track your progress and and send timely reminders to keep you on track. Or you can use one of their dedicated programs called Journeys. This will guide you on your personal adventure each day, building your routines over several weeks. By progressing slowly, it really helps you build on your successes and helps you achieve your new habit goals more easily. You'll take small steps each day and soon you'll have fully customized morning, afternoon, and evening routines and with several weeks of success under your belt. Recently, I've been in a rush to start working on the morning and been slacking on my personal time. Using Fabulous, I built my custom morning routine Routine, and each morning I get a reminder that it's time for me to read, journal, and play with my dogs. It seems simple, but having that daily reminder makes the difference in staying on track or falling off. Personally, I really love the look and feel of Fabulous. It's really well designed and I love the art and animations they use throughout the app. It really makes it fun to open the app and achieve my targets just to progress up the mountains as they call them. With Fabulous Premium, you can build and improve an unlimited number of habits in your routines and take part in all the programs and exercises. The premium features really round out the app, in my opinion. Start building your ideal daily routine. The first 100 people who click on the link will get 25% off a Fabulous subscription. Thanks again to Fabulous for sponsoring this video. To understand why these populations are struggling with obesity, we first need to understand some backstory. Nauru was once a lush green island paradise. Isolated from the rest of the world, it was a fully self-sustaining ecosystem where the inhabitants lived and thrived in tribal communities. The Nauruans made a living through mostly fishing and gathering and enjoyed a traditional diet of fresh raw fish, root vegetables, nuts, coconuts, and fruits surviving and thriving this way for thousands of years. That is, until they were accidentally discovered by the Western world. In the year 1899, a New Zealand prospector noticed that a Nauruan rock was loaded with an extremely valuable mineral, phosphate. By 1906, the beautiful and tiny island nation of Nauru was seized and turned into what essentially amounts to one big strip mine. The governments of Germany, Britain, Australia, and New Zealand seized control of Nauru's natural resources and established a trust to govern and oversee what would become Nauru's first and last industry. Phosphate is the only economic resource of the island. Mining phosphate is a huge and costly undertaking. The mining would continue for over 100 years and bring in billions of dollars and new people from all over the West to Nauru. Nauru's natural resources and mining industry were returned to the now independent Nauruan people and the country entered a golden age, even briefly becoming, quote, the smallest and wealthiest independent democracy in the world. With the LA Times reporting in 1985 that, in an ocean whose island people usually make do with thatched roof huts and outrigger canoes, the Nauruans spread out in ranch-style solar-powered homes, with at least one Land Rover and usually a powerboat in every driveway. So where did it all go horribly wrong? How can phosphate mining have an effect on the health and waste signs of an entire country? Well, it turns out that phosphate is the key ingredient 
and fertilizer. In a sad twist of irony, the 43 million tons of phosphate sucked out of Nauru were shipped around the world to other countries to help them grow their food. And phosphate mining is incredibly destructive. It involves stripping away large layers of earth to reach the minerals below, leaving behind barren, jagged heaps of petrified coral, unsuitable for building, agriculture, or plant life of any form. Over the course of the 20th century, 90% of the island nation was decimated. Quote, inch for inch, Nauru is the most environmentally ravaged nation on earth. A far cry from the abundant tropical paradise it once was, it has become a gray, desolate wasteland where almost nothing grows. The Nauru people have been pushed to the only habitable land left, a 4.2 kilometer strip of coastline. By the year 2000, nearly 100% of the phosphate had been stripped from Nauru. And when the phosphate ran out, so did the money and the opportunities for employment, sending Nauru into poverty and obesity. But how exactly does that make people obese? Well, with the island nation's resources so depleted, the people of Nauru can no longer grow their own food. Even fishing is more difficult, as researchers estimate that approximately 40% of Nauru's marine life has been lost due to pollution. Today, Nauru is almost 100% reliant on imports, unable to support itself without outside assistance from the countries that left it in shambles. They even need to import their drinking water thanks to runoff from the mining sites contaminating all the fresh water on the island. Now most of their water is shipped in on a tanker from Australia, making it cheaper to buy soda in Nauru than drinking water. And this is where the nutrition transition issue on Nauru starts to unfold. The term nutrition transition is defined as the transition of developing countries from their traditional nutrient-rich diet to a Western diet and overall way of life. Thanks to contamination, the Nauru staple of freshly caught fish has been replaced with canned tuna and spam. Their traditional carbs of coconut, breadfruit, pineapple, and many other once abundant natural fruits have taken a backseat to white rice, instant noodles, sugar, chocolate chips, candies, and beer. And the meat. Being an island, Nauru traditionally didn't have access to much meat at all, but today they are eating a lot of meat, if you could even call it that. This meat isn't sold in other countries. Did you know that? Pacific Islanders have a love affair with some extremely questionable meat dropped off on their country by Australia and America. Ever heard of a mutton flap or turkey tail? Now it's marketed as a turkey tail, but it's actually an oil filled gland that attaches the feathers to the turkey's body. About 75% of the calories from this so-called tail come from pure fat, making it extremely unhealthy and also cheap. With so many choice cuts of meat available at home, the American market never had much of a taste for turkey tails. And as turkey production ramped up in the 1950s, rather than let them go to waste, the American poultry industry saw a business opportunity. The target? Pacific Island communities, where animal protein was scarce. New Zealand and Australia followed suit, dumping off their mutton flaps or sheep bellies. What was once a meat waste product unfit for consumption in the West, and today sold mostly as dog food here at home, became a coveted item in these Pacific Island communities where meat was rare and expensive. By 2007, inhabitants were consuming more than 44 pounds of turkey tails every year. Only two generations later, many people across the Pacific Islands even consider these waste meats part of their national cuisine. With fresh, locally sourced food becoming more rare and therefore expensive, cheap, processed foods are now the norm in these countries. It's a time bomb. They have gone from a rural lifestyle eating fish and vegetables to the very, very worst of Western lifestyles in one or two generations. And they are paying the price. When the phosphate money started rolling in for the Nauruans, the Western way of life seemed like a glamorous upgrade. And it wasn't just food that was imported here. With all the new people on the island, it was a new mindset, a new way of thinking. They rapidly went from living off the land, spending most of their time fishing and gathering, to living extremely sedentary lifestyles. Brainwashed with the ideals of Western civilization, the locals even started buying cars to get around the island, even though it reportedly takes less than 20 minutes to drive around the entire thing. Once a police officer on the island imported a Lamborghini, only to be too fat to drive 
survive it by the time it arrived. And after just a few short generations of living and eating like the Western world, the health of the entire South Pacific is in crisis. Laurie May has type 2 diabetes, brought on by obesity. She's going blind and she's had two toes amputated. She's 28. In Fiji, diabetes leads to an amputation every 12 hours. In American Samoa, a coroner reflects that the caskets keep getting larger and the dead are trending younger every year. And the island of Guam was home to the famous and tragic story of Ricky Naputi, the 900-pound man who passed away at just 39 years old after reaching over 900 pounds. Diagnoses of diabetes are in the Pacific are now the highest in the world, with nearly half of all adults suffering from the life-threatening condition. A century of exploitation has left the Pacific Islands devoid of their health and unable to do anything about it. Obviously, the Western way of life and processed food in particular has some serious flaws if its introduction involves the decimation of an entire area of the world. And the whole story clearly demonstrates the massive role that lifestyle and food and movement plays in our health. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.